Joe in Virginia uh, says you have questions for me. What do you want to know? Hey, Kenneth, you remember me? I do, Joe. How's it going? <laughs> this is our third time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just I can ask them to both of you, but uh, you're you're a big MMA jujitsu guy, right? Used to be, yeah, a long time ago. Did you get your black belt? No, purple, which is the most fabulous of the belts. Yeah, purple's good enough. I mean, you can pretty, you can kick people's butt with a purple belt. I'm a big jujitsu guy, so. Okay, all right. But, uh, okay, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, I call you because I, I kind of think you're one of the most reasonable guys to actually have a real conversation with, so. Oh, I hope I don't disappoint. Arden's here. Arden's even more reasonable than I am. So you're you're in luck today. Just, just uh, depends uh, what uh, you're gonna say. Yeah, just an explosion of reason over here. Yeah, I don't I don't want anything to be combative or, or anything. I'm not really interested in arguing. So okay, just a uh, few questions. Okay, so, okay. Uh, what can we do for you? Do you think God exists or God does not exist? And how confident are you in whichever one you believe? Ooh, I like it. We, we've turned the interview format around onto the host. I love this. Okay. Um, I am not convinced that any gods exist. And based on the definitions that I've been given for various gods, my confidence level is at a zero that any of those gods exist. And I guess that's probably the same for you, Arden, right? Yeah. I mean, like, I, I might be like a 1% like the like a deistic, polytheistic kind of conception of of like the universe god this like that like makes sense but like i don't believe in it and at that point it seems so indistinguishable from a non-god that i'm like uh, this has no value to me that's like saying like my water bottle is god like okay maybe but that doesn't mean anything so yeah yeah that doesn't make any sense to anybody i don't think people saying the universe is god makes any sense so okay uh, um so you think so, Kenneth? You think it's more? It's probably it's equivalent to Santa Claus, right? Uh, n no, because I think that there's, you know, I, I and I could, I mean, I'm kind of talking on my ass right now, but I, I'm pretty sure there's like a historical Saint Nicholas. <laughs> Whereas with God, yeah, okay. I think that you know, where there's legends that that are built into the Santa Claus thing, I think that as far as I can tell, every time I hear God invoked as an explanation for something or as a being that people can have a relationship with, it seems to uh, to be sort of just this invented uh, fiction thing. Uh, yeah, I was just talking about Santa Claus. There's some guy in the North Pole, you know. Sure. I mean, we, both, we both know that that's pretty much 0%. I would agree. Uh, all right. Do you think um, that you have any bias and that maybe there are reasons people do not want God to exist. And maybe there are reasons people have their own personal bias. Maybe that they don't want God to exist. And maybe some people have their personal bias. They want God to exist. I would certainly agree that people have biases where they would want, you know, certain things to be true or not to be true. Um, my, and I bet Arden would have a lot more interesting stuff to say about the sort of mechanics of those biases than, than I can. But I, my, my bias, I, I try very, very hard to encourage my bias for wanting uh, strong evidence-based beliefs. I want to believe true yeah. things. So, um, and and there's a number of ways out there to sort of become aware of cognitive traps, to become aware of, of biases, to, to, to try to mitigate the risk of things that are going to cloud you coming to true conclusions. So I'm very much biased towards learning as much as I can about those things so that I don't accept any nonsense or bullshit and the, the, the things that I believe I've got good reasons. Yeah. I mean, if, if the Christian God exists and I'm going to hell for being me and being me literally hurts no one, yeah. like, yeah, that's a pretty strong bias I'm going to have to be like skeptical of whether this God exists. Cause that's to me, that sounds like bullshit. I'm not hurting anyone. I'm, I can't control who I am. If I'm going to go to hell for that, that's that's pretty wild. So, like, I think it, maybe it, it is a bias that, like, would cause me to be skeptical in the first place. But I think when you apply skepticism and, like, good evidentiary standards and evaluate the claims, like, on an individual basis, you can kind of skirt the bias. Like, of course, there are going to be gaps. And, of course, there's probably going to be times when 
people point out like, hey, like you maybe rejected this claim with not good reason. And if that's the case, I hope that I can be intellectually honest and say, yeah, actually, you're right. You know what? I'm going to take some time to evaluate this claim a little more deeply and hopefully uh, have a more evidence based position on it. Yeah. And I'm super prone to irrationality. I'm super prone to having stupid biased beliefs. I think that I don't think there's a single human being on Earth who isn't susceptible to, to bias. No. So. Okay. I mean, there are parts of me, like I'm a theist and there's parts of me that doesn't want God to exist. So, you know, even, you know, I think it can go both ways that, that I think there's plenty of reasons to not, my personal view of kind of this online atheist movement is nothing personal against you guys, but I think it's much more of a, uh, I think it's a lot of it has to do with kind of psychological and mental desires as much as it is intellectual. And that's not, I'm not, talking about you specifically, but that's just how I see it. And well, agree. I mean, in light of the fact that you are just talking to us today, I can tell you that um, to me, the question of whether God exists or not, um, my want shouldn't come into it. It, it either right. is the case that God exists or it is not the case. And then based on what the evidence tells me, I need to you know, live accordingly. Because <laughs> yeah, if the, if the gods that people tell me exist are in fact real, then me saying, I don't want to believe that uh, could put me in a pretty shitty position uh, in light of, you know, claims about eternity and all that stuff. So uh, I think that it, I don't think it's ever a, a good thing for us to delude ourselves or to, to, you know, allow ourselves to cave to motivated reasoning and, and base our beliefs on what we want to be the case. I think that's a good way to be wrong. And I don't want to be wrong. Yeah. All right. I, I understand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you apply the same skepticism to your own atheist uh, beliefs? Uh, give me an example of an atheist belief. Okay, well, you don't have to believe this as an atheist, but generally, you know, people believe, you know, probably in abiogenesis or macroevolution, I would say probably generally, not everybody. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen what the odds are, of even maybe like a single protein coming from life coming coming from non life yeah okay. can i give you can i give you a quote sure give us a quote okay the chance that higher life forms have emerged through evol evolutionary processes is comparable with the chance that a tornado sweeping through a junkyard don't say a 747. Don't oh, say a 747. My seventh grade science teacher told yep. me that. Oh, Jesus, Joe. Joe. No, no, Joe. <laughs> that's terrible. You know, Do you know that's not true. <laughs> Do you know who said it? I, I'm, I'm going to just throw, I don't know, Ken Ham. Who said that? Uh, Fred Hoyle, the father of uh, who coined big, uh, the Big Bang cosmology. So okay. He's, he's a pretty reputable scientist. Well, I mean, you know, the term Big Bang was originally used as a pejorative, right? Uh, I don't know the, the history. I just know that. Well, you can look that up. Uh, look, here's, here's the deal. So it, it, that that statement would, would uh, there, okay, there's two layers here. One, you said he was a reputable source, and we need to talk about that. But first, the the idea that, um, that a, a, a tornado ripping through a junkyard would produce a 747 um, it, that that is in any way analogous to evolution is uh, is nonsense, and it betrays a deep ignorance when it comes to what evolution is. Um, so, uh, ev because well. there's no selection methods at play with the tornado, there's there's nothing going on there where where you would arrive at life starting from non life. Life starting from non life has nothing to do with evolution. Well, it has to start a abi abiogenesis, right? That has nothing to do with evolution. Well, evolution has to start somewhere, right? Sure. So life eventually had to start from non-life. You know, there's a lot of people that don't believe that. There's a ton of Christians out there who think that God created life and then evolution got us to where we are today. What would you say to those people? What do you What do you believe? I'm asking you. You're the guest. So because the evolution is a fact and the evidence for evolution is conclusive. So whether life was, is my, was are you talking about microevolution or macroevolution? Yes. Which macro? All of it. 
So macroevolution is a fact. Uh, all of it. All of evolution is a fact. No, I'm just talking. They're different things, right? Microevolution. No, they're not no, different things. Different. They're not different things. The only difference is they're time. Not. No, the only difference is time. I thought macroevolution was different from microevolution. It's not. It's the, the, these these distinctions are used by creationists. Oh, Kenneth's cutting out. Right, so you're, you're sure. The confusion. There you go. Oh, is he back? Yeah, we go. I'm back. Yeah. Okay, I, I, okay. I'll, the thing I said, I'm having tech issues today. I'm sorry, That's folks. Okay. I, uh, no, these, these terms, micro and macro evolution, these are terms that are, are, have been popularized and they're used by creationists to confuse people. But there, there, there's evolution and there are a number of different methods of selection that operate within the broader theory of evolution and how we refer to, to you know, the, the, the process by which we arrived at, at diversity on on this planet with respect to, to to life and biology okay so um whether life started by abiogenesis or you know jesus is irrelevant to the fact that evolution happened and is happening okay well if you say it's a fact i mean i don't really do, i don't i don't agree that macroevolution is a fact i mean you may say this but <laughs> don't don't believe me don't believe me listen Joe, do not believe me. I want you to assume that I am completely full of shit and I want you to go to the nearest college and knock on a biology professor's door and say, this asshole on the internet told me this thing and then let that guy or, or woman or whoever, let that person explain it to you. But don't believe me. Test get, it. Who did you do? How did you get that evidence that macroevolution is a fact? I mean... I, I don't even know where to begin. We can talk about genetics. We can talk about the fossil record. I mean, it's 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 everywhere. But but this is not really the forum for it. You you need to go go on go on the Talk Origins website. Go on Wikipedia. Don't believe me. Just just I'm telling you. I'm asking you. Apply the level of skepticism that you would to to anything, and and then go see what the scientific literature says. Go to your local museum. Go. I mean, go digging. Do you think we evolved from a fish? A fish? Yeah. I I do not think we evolved from a fish. I don't think any scientist would tell you that that was the case either. <laughs> that's what Richard Dawkins believes. I don't think that's a, an accurate or fair or honest assessment of what like, Professor if you Dawkins believes. Far back enough on the evolutionary like quote unquote tree, like are you going to find like organisms who primarily like we're aquatic, like sure, yeah, but absolutely. does that mean that we came from fish? Like that's a, a really loaded statement to like yeah. disagree or disagree to. Kenneth, you can look it up on the internet. Richard Dawkins says it. So don't call me dishonest for saying something. I've, actually I've read I've read Dawkins books. I've even spent time with the man personally. And I, I'm 100% sure that nowhere in any of his literature, for, I mean, there, there might be one or two of his books that I haven't read. Uh, I, I don't recall ever seeing we uh, came from a fish ever anywhere. Like he, I've seen him say it. He said it on the internet. You can look it up. Why don't you go? Okay, oh, Joe, Joe, I'll humor you. Like, yes, yes. Like I said, if we go back far enough, there is fish in our evolutionary history. Sure. But yeah, like I, I, when you say we came from fish, I'm getting the impression that you think when someone says that, that they mean like a fish had a baby and that baby was a human. Like yeah. at some point in our history, and that's not what anyone is saying. No, I didn't. I didn't quite say that. I said, "Do you believe we evolved from fish?" And Kenneth said, "No." Richard Dawkins did not say that. I'm sorry. right because Kenneth can sniff out that you're you're <laughs> trying to give us a very loaded yeah, statement Come when on. you say that. I don't think Kenneth is denying that there are fish in our evolutionary history. Yeah. All right. All right. That's fine. And we could know that by looking at our genetic makeup and looking at the genetic makeup of different, you know, aquatic creatures, you know, mammals and otherwise. I mean, we could we could look at this and and trace that history. Okay. All right. Uh, well, he did say that, but either way. Okay. So, uh, do you think an infinite regress of the events is possible? Uh, I I don't know. Sure. Maybe. I don't know. You, you think an infinite regress of, of temporal events is actually possible? I I don't know. Like hypothetically, or do you mean like 
like that it has literally happened like again you're you're serving these like loaded statements and it feels like you're trying to trap us in saying yeah. like these things and like and our understanding of time i mean time you know, breaks down and gets funny once we get closer and closer to the Big Bang, right? So, so I'm not even sure that the question even makes sense. But what's the point? And again, you're. I'm just saying that. I'm just trying to question you guys. I'm not trying to do anything personal. You know, I'm not. I'm not hating on you because you're atheist. I'm just trying to be skeptical. I just want to know your point. Like, I feel like you're trying to get to a point by asking us questions, and I feel like we're not getting anywhere. So, like, is there like a is there a deeper yeah. point to your call that you're trying to like? demonstrate that by answering these questions that we are like uh, uh like not being logical in our beliefs or like where yeah. are you going with this yeah what's the point uh, well, i'm sorry you don't like being questioned i'm you know if i if no it's not that I no didn't nobody that said they didn't yeah nobody said they didn't like being questioned but this is a call-in show with limited time we've got other callers too so we're trying to be respectful to everybody so what's the point of the questions where's it going well, uh, if logically an infinite regression of events is impossible, I mean, I think that's, it's pretty, and I think you should show the same level of skepticism to even that even being possible. Okay. We're not any closer to a point. What's, what's the point here, Joe? All right. Uh, I just don't think this is going anywhere, but Kenneth. I agree. I appreciate it. Joe, uh -huh. you're killing me here, man. So wait a minute. So you're a, you're a theist, right? Did we lose Joe? Ah, Joe's gone. Man, right when it could have gotten interesting. Well, hey, I'm glad we could clear some stuff up. <laughs> like, I, cool. Like, I, again, if his whole point was to say that he thinks logical and like regressive events is impossible, like, okay, that's uh, I mean, you think that. If that's all you I, want to say, that's fine, I guess. But. And just just to clear this up for Joe, I mean, Joe, I said I don't know, and that's the deal with 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 skeptics. Sometimes the best thing we can say is I don't know, because if I want to proportion my beliefs to the evidence, and I don't have strong evidence that you know, or any evidence that an infinite regress is possible or impossible, and and I don't know, you know, I don't even understand the question that you're trying to get at, you know, right? And, then and saying I don't know is the is the the honest thing to do. I agree. But that's why I was also kind of like, you know, like hypothetically, can I imagine that an infinite regressive events is possible? Yeah. Like, yeah. In, in, but like, are, are we talking about in the real world? Do I actually think that's happened? That's a completely different question. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Well, anyway. All right. 